Jesus of Emmanuel Luther. The words chosen for our meditation this morning are taken from our Gospel reading, which was previously read, but focusing on Luke 12, verse 32, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So far the words of our text, grace, mercy, and peace to you, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Question, and can any one of you by writing add a single hour to your life? That's a good question, for it has been said, worrying is like a rocking chair, it gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. Especially with your worry, and with God. In our full text, regarding the worry such as food, Jesus calls us to consider the ravens, who neither sow nor reap, and they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them, and how much more are ye better than the fowls? And, regarding another worry such as clothes or God's provision for our needs, Jesus says, Consider the lilies, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin, yet even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Sadly, we worry so much about all of these things, and we forget about trusting God, especially in circumstances when it's really, really hard to do. And the answer is simple. We cannot add even one second to our lives by our own worrying, let alone a single hour. I think it is fair to say we all agree with that statement, and Thus we can be still in the Lord, just as we would agree that turning our worries over to Jesus is always our best cure or remedy. So why don't we, or perhaps more accurately, why do we wait so long? Perhaps because we forget, that is, when that first little worry exposes itself and fills our heads with worries, and we are too busy thinking of other things, or, perhaps we don't feel that worry is such a big thing. But as we know, worries can be like little snowballs rolling downhill, also known as the snowball effect, and pretty soon we are caught up in it, until eventually they become a giant avalanche, and we are totally covered by our worry or worries, Another reason might be, we may feel this new worry isn't important. After all, most of the things we worry about never happen anyway. Which is true, but we worry about them anyway and throw them on the heap. In other words, the enemy already has distracted our attention to some earlier worry, of which he makes us feel as much more important while he tactfully maneuvers our thoughts away from Jesus, without having recognized the danger. However the devil works, or, however our weak fallen nature works, we delay, or, we don't call upon Jesus slash God, that is, our Lord, with our worries, but instead we blindly march unwittingly headlong into its fray only to become burdened or physically, emotionally or spiritually disabled by such worry's power. But it is God's Spirit, <coughs> along with His Word of which we hear today, that remind us in our, our saving grace. My Christian friends, worry, anxiety, and fear go hand in hand. However, if we were to be concerned about something, but not worry mind you, but concerned, we should be concerned how sin and all that goes with it, pervades around us, personally as well as socially. For example, the sin of homosexuality, which like all sin, if they repent they certainly will be forgiven. It's been said that homosexuality is the tip of the spear. 
and if given legal protection status, it could likely lead to things like outlawing Christianity and ushering all manner of perversion. For homosexuality is rebellion to God saying, you can't tell me what to do or how to live my life. I'm in charge of my life, and not you, God. This is a scary concern, but again, not to fear because ultimately speaking, God is in control. By the way, fear comes from the Greek word, phobia. And now I'd like to have each of us journey back in our minds, all the way back to when we were children, and we had a great fear, or phobia, over something. In my case around the time I was seven or eight, it was the fear of dentists, for there actually is such a thing as dentophobia. I recall being terrified by just the sound of a dentist's drill, and his goggles mask also freaked me out. When our dentist in Breckenridge, Dr. Zimmerman had to fill a small cavity for me, he had to have my mother and his assistant hold me down, and afterwards I told this dentist I was coming back to kill him. <laughs> he told my mother that I was his worst patient of all time. That was my dentophobia and it lasted till the time of my late twenties or early thirties. My wife Jody might say that it's wrong, it's more like his fifties, and to some degree she would be right, as I still have a fear of the dentist. All kidding aside, there did come a time when praying before going into his chair became a common practice, just as it did for all my later medical experiences, and I can say unashamedly, it made all the difference in the world. The fear was now in the hands and a greater power than myself, and it was as simple as that. By the way, there are all kinds of phobias out there such as the top ten list you see before you. Number one being arachnophobia, the fear of spiders, and social phobia which is the fear of speaking in public and other social situations and you'll see the rest below. Some of the rarest phobias are xanthophobia, fear of the color of the word, yellow. Sufferers of xanthophobia may fear anything yellow. The next rare phobia, turophobia, is the fear of cheese, and somnophobia is the fear of falling asleep, and cholrophobia, which is the fear of clowns. In a sense, we ourselves are like silly clowns because of fear, if we think we can handle our worries on our own. Back to our text, Jesus says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. If that is true, which indeed it is, then we truly need only to trust God and fear nothing. Our text reminds us that, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It seems that when we are immersed with the treasure of our heart, namely God, there is no room in our hearts for fear. However, those treasures must start with God and be good. But if that, say it's the love of money, the treasure of money dominates in a person's heart, if it is love of Christ and our neighbor, and living in the good and perfect will of our Heavenly Father, then our hearts are filled with that blessed treasure. That, my Christian friends, is the treasure of every Christian. God, in His goodness, allows His children to also have other treasures in their hearts which, like a cup overflowing, we have an overflowing of treasures in our hearts. For example, that may include the joy of a person's work, or a family, and his love for them, which is one of life's greatest blessings. Or, 
His leisure time activities like golf, or gardening, and getting their hands in the good word mirth. Or music just to mention a few. Here is a little story that speaks to this special and priceless treasure of our hearts, that is this faith in God, and following his good and perfect will. We have all heard of rock and roll, but there is a story about a rock that wouldn't grow. It so happened one night in a dream, God came to a man and said, I put a huge stone out in the middle of your yard, and I want you to push that rock. That was it. The man shook himself and went to the door and turned on the porch light, and sure enough, a massive stone, kind of like the one in front of Jesus' grave 2,000 years ago. Only more massive. Well, the man went back to bed. And when we woke up, he went to the window thinking he would not see the rock, and that it was merely a figment of his dream that past night. But there it was. So, the man went outside and began to push the rock, but it wouldn't grow. He pushed as hard as he could, day after day, and it still wouldn't grow. After some time, this man became a novelty to his neighbors in all that drove by. Kind of like Noah building the ark in the middle of the land, and people laughed at, as well as mocked Noah. And so this guy became known as the pusher of the rock that wouldn't grow. One night, Satan came to him in his dreams and began to mock him, saying, Huh? You are the pusher of the rock that wouldn't grow. All you do is push, and your face, it gets red as a beet, and all your neighbors laugh at you saying, Ha ha, he's never even rolled that rock one inch. No wonder your neighbors laugh at you and call you names. And as he was about to say more, the Lord entered the dream and said, Be gone, Satan, and he was gone in a flash. <coughs> And still sleeping in and his dream the man said, Lord, he was right, my neighbors do mock me, and, like he said, I haven't moved that rock one inch. Jesus smiled at him and said, did I ask you to move the rock? No, not even one inch. But I did tell you to push the rock and this you did faithfully each day even while your neighbors mocked you. Look now at your strong legs and arms, and that which you can't see, your spirit, has become stronger as well by my grace. And God continued to tell him of a new assignment which demanded even greater faith. Jesus then said, Well done my faithful son, and then the man who wakes, Why died? For the dream seemed so real. And he smiles to himself, a satisfied smile. My Christian friends, it is God's will to give us the kingdom. Hence, we needn't fear the trials and tribulations that go along with this life, or being a Christian. Thus, we needn't be worried, folks. By God's grace, we have instead become xenophobes, that is, having a healthy and godly fear of sinning. Yes, in a godly way, for when people fear God in a godly way, they fear and respect God, also known as believing in Him. For when people really fear and respect God, they try their best to avoid sin, and rather, be faithful in our God's callings. As we apply our Lord Jesus and His Word, which is the Word of God, to our lives, we never need to fear that we are unforgiven, for we are. And, by His grace, not only does God dwell within us, but we have His promise as such, and in a personal way, 
He says, by my grace, my child, your sins are forgiven. A life to which we shall be greeted from this life, when our time is over, with the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. To his glory and praise, both now and forever, amen. <laughs>